Section 2.4 is zeros of polynomial functions. Recall that a polynomial function of degree n can have at most n real zeros. These real zeros are either rational or irrational. Notice we have one, two, three factors, and when we multiply these three factors, we get this polynomial. Notice specifically that negative three times two is negative six, and then negative six times negative four gives you the positive 24, and that's sitting out here on the end. So if we're given this polynomial right here, if we want the potential zeros, we just have to find the factors of 24, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4. 6 would be a possibility, and notice that 6 doesn't work, but at least we would know the possibilities. Now look at this example. We have 2x minus 3. So if we had the factors of 24, we wouldn't get any fractions out of this, but however, a 0, one of the zeros here is 3 halves. So we need to take the factors of 24 and divide by the factors of 2 to get all of the possibilities. If f is a polynomial function of the form this, with degree n greater than equal to 1, integer coefficients in a sub 0 does not equal 0, then every rational 0 of f has the form p over q, where p and q have no common factors other than plus or minus 1, p is an integer factor of the constant term a sub 0, and q is the integer factor of the leading coefficient a sub n. If the leading coefficient a sub n is 1, then the rational zeros of f are integer factors of the constant form a over 0. So we have to find the factors of a sub 0, and then we have to take those factors of a sub 0 and divide by the factors of a sub n to find all of the potential rational zeros. List all the possible rational zeros of this polynomial, then determine which, if any, are zeros. So the possible rational roots, we say, they are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. It is the factors of 4. Now, since the leading coefficient is 1, we don't have to divide all these by 1. So now we start from the beginning. We say, all right, 1's a possibility. So we're going to divide synthetically. 1, negative 3, negative 2, and 4. Bring down the 1. 1, we have negative 2. That's negative 2. That's negative 4. That's negative 4. And ha, we find the very first one. I would have tried negative 1 next, then 2 next, then negative 2 next until the remainder was 0. Now we have x squared minus 2x minus 4. And I don't think this factors, so there are no other um, rational zeros. So the only rational zero is 1. Now if we wanted to find more rational zeros, all we'd have to do is factor what remains. Now what if, uh, what if it would have been f of x is equal to x, uh, 3x to the third minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 4? What if we had that? Well, the possible rational roots would be 1, 2, plus or minus 4. And that would be like plus all the plus or minus over 1 because the, the factors of 3 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. But now our other potentials would be uh, plus or minus 1 third plus or minus two-thirds, and then another one would be plus or minus four-thirds. So that way we get all of the p's, the factor of four, over all of the q's, which are the factors of three. Upper and lower bound tests. Let f be a polynomial function of degree n greater than or equal to one, real coefficients and a positive leading coefficient. Suppose f of x is divided by x minus c using synthetic division. If c is less than or equal to 0 and every number in the last line division is alternately non-negative and non-positive, then c is a lower bound for the real zeros of f. If c is greater than or equal to 0 and every number in the last line of the division is non-negative, then c is the upper bound for the real zeros of f. So we want to decide, does, uh, does this have any zeros outside of negative 3 and 7? In other words, is negative 5. Could that be a 0? Uh, could 10 be a 0? Let's plug negative 3 in synthetically and see if it is what we call a lower bound. We have 1, negative 4, negative 11, negative 4, negative 12. Uh, bring down the 1, we have negative 3, negative 7. We have 21, that's going to be 10, negative 30, add negative 34. And then we have, uh, let's see, 34, 3, 12, 1, 102, 102, 
that's going to be positive. And then we got 102 minus 12, that'd be zero. Looks like we have a positive 90. We'll notice that this is negative and the signs alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So three is negative three is a lower bound, which means there won't be any zeros of this polynomial less than negative three. Now let's try the upper bound test with seven. One, negative four, negative 11, negative four, negative 12. So we'll bring the first one down. We have seven, three, 21. That's going to be 10, 70, which is 60. Six, and then we need 66 times 7, 42, 462, so we have 462, and that's going to be 450. And notice all of these are positive, not one single number is negative. That means 7 is an upper bound, which means there will be no zeros for this polynomial greater than 7. Descartes' rule of signs. If this polynomial is a polynomial function with real coefficients, then the number of positive real zeros of f is equal to the number of variations in sine of f of x or less than that number by some even number. And the number of negative real zeros of f is the same as the number of variations in the sine of f of negative x or less than that number by some even number. So uh, we're looking at f of x here, and we notice we go from positive to negative. That's one sign change. Negative and negative is the same. Negative to positive is two sign changes, and then positive to positive, no sign change. So the number of positive solutions is either two, or we knock that down by two, two or zero. Now, if there would have been six sign changes, then there could be six, four, two, or zero positive solutions. Now let's find what f of negative x is. When you plug negative x into x to the fourth, that's going to be positive. That stays positive. But then the odd powers change signs, so it would be plus 3x to the third. This would be minus 5x squared, because if you square a negative, it doesn't change the sign. Then we have minus 2x and finally plus 7. Well, let's look at the number of sign changes. We have none. We have one sign change. We have two sign changes. So the number of possible negative solutions is either 2 or 0. Describe the positive real zeros, the possible real, describe the possible real zeros of this one. All right, so we have g of x, we have one sign change, two sign changes, three sign changes. So the positive is three or one, because we'll knock that down by two. Now I need g of negative x, that's going to be x to the third plus 8x squared. Uh, that'll be plus 7x and then plus 9, so there are zero negatives. Fundamental theorem of algebra. A polynomial function of degree n where n is greater than zero has at least one zero, real or imaginary, in the complex number system. Corollary, a polynomial function of degree n has exactly n zeros, including repeated zeros, in the complex number system. Linear factorization theorem. If f of x is a polynomial function of degree n greater than zero, with, then f has exactly n linear factors, where a sub n is some non-zero uh, real number and these are the complex zeros included, repeated zeros of f. Now, what does all this mean? Write a polynomial function of at least uh, of least degree with real coefficients in standard form that has negative 1, 2, and 2 minus i as zeros. So then f of x is going to be equal to, we'll have x plus 1. We have uh, x minus 2, so x plus 1 for this one, x minus 2 for this one. And then we have x minus 2 minus i. And then if this has real coefficients, then we also have x minus 2 plus i. So if 2 minus i is a 0, then 2 plus i is going to be a 0. They're called conjugates. Now there's a hard way to multiply this out, and there's an easy way. Let's multiply these two together right here. We have x squared minus x minus 2. And then we're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to distribute a negative, and we're going to regroup. We have x minus 2 plus i, and then we'll distribute the negative over here. We have x minus 2 and then minus i. And now we've created the difference of two squares. So f of x is going to be equal to x squared minus x minus 2. And then first is going to be x minus 2 squared. Outside is minus i x minus 2. Inside is positive i x minus 2. Those are going to cancel. 
And then finally, we have the last, which is going to be minus i squared. So f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 2 uh, times x squared minus 4x plus 4. But then watch this, plus 1. If i is the square root of negative 1, then i squared is negative uh, square root of negative 1 squared, which is negative 1. i squared is negative 1. Uh, so this turns into x squared minus x minus x minus 2 times x squared minus 4x and then plus 5. So now let's distribute this x squared through. We get x to the 4th minus 4x to the 3rd plus 5x squared. Let's distribute this minus x through. We have minus x to the 3rd plus 4x squared minus 5x. And then let's distribute the negative 2 through. Uh, that gives us minus 2x squared plus 8x and then minus 10. And now we can combine the like terms. And our solution is x to the 4th minus 5x to the 3rd. Uh, we have 9 minus 2 is 7, so plus 7x squared, plus 3x, and then minus 10. And that is our final f of x. Find all complex zeros of that. Given that, 2 plus 5i is a zero of p. Then write the linear factorization of p of x. So we have to plug 2 plus 5i into the box. We have 1, negative 6. 35, negative 50, negative 58. Let's bring down the 1. We have 2 plus 5i. And that's going to be negative 4 plus 5i. Then we have to multiply these two together, which is FOIL. So we have, uh, let's see, we have minus 8. We have outside is plus 10i. Inside is minus 20i. And then we're going to have uh, plus 25i squared, which is going to be minus 25, so minus 8. Um, then we have minus 10i and minus 25. So we have minus 33 minus 10i. So this becomes minus 33 minus 10i, which gives us, uh, what's that going to be? 2 minus 10i. But now we have to multiply these two together. All right, we can do this. We can do this. We have 4 minus 20i and then plus 10i. And then we have minus 50i squared, which is going to be plus 50. So that gives us 54 and then minus 10i. So we have 54, 54 minus 10i right there. Now, when we add these two together, we're going to get 4 minus 10i. Now, when we multiply those two together, we get 8. 8, 2 times 4, minus 20i. Look at this, plus 20i, and then we have minus 50i squared, which is going to be plus 50, which is going to be 58, and the 20s cancel out. So we end up with 58, and it truly is a 0 because the remainder is 0. Well, now if 2 plus 5i is a 0, then 2 minus 5i is a zero, and we have to go through the whole process again. Yes, I know it's kind of a pain, isn't it? But that's the way it is. I mean, it's sometimes, you know, things aren't uh, the easiest possible thing we've ever done in our lives. But that's okay. We can get through this. We'll, we can do this. We just have to do a lot of little arithmetic here. So bring down the one. One. Bam. Got it. Two minus five i times one is two minus five i. Oh, look at this. Those are going to cancel. That's going to be negative two. Then we have negative 4, and then plus 10i. Oh, this is working out great. Minus 2. And then we have negative 4 plus 10i. And look at that. Uh, we said that 2 plus 5i is a 0, so 2 minus 5i has to be a 0, and the remainder is actually 0. So we have x squared minus 2x minus 2. Now, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to find all, find all complex zeros. Oh, no, this doesn't factor, but that's okay. We have the quadratic formula. So we have um, b plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 all over 2 times 1. So we have 2 plus or minus the square root of, what do we have here? We have 4 plus 
8, right? Plus 8, that's 12 over 2. So we have 2 plus or minus uh, 2 square root of 3 over 2. So we have 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. And it says, then write the linearization fact, linear factorization of P of X. All right, here's the linear factorization. So P of X is equal to, we have X minus 2 minus 5I, X minus 2 plus 5I, and this original, go back to the original, this is an X to the fourth, so we have all four of the complex zeros. We have X minus 1 plus or minus, ah, we could do it like that, no problem. We could have combined those two with a plus and a minus. We got it.